The false codling moth, commonly known as FCM, is a pomegranate pest unique to Africa. This pest doesn't occur in most countries to which South Africa exports its fruit. These countries don't want to risk the pest spreading to their countries and don't want any fruit infested with FCM entering their countries. It is very important that we do everything we can in South Africa to prevent infested fruit from being exported to these countries. If we fail to do this, these export markets may close down and pomegranate farmers will lose a lot of money. Monitoring in the orchard and inspecting fruit in the packhouse for FCM infestation is extremely important to prevent the export of infested fruit. As the person responsible for monitoring and inspection, you have one of the most important jobs on the farm or in the packhouse. If you fail to identify infested fruit, it is likely that infested fruit will be exported. This fruit may then be rejected in the export market and that country can refuse to take further fruit from South Africa. If this happens, pomegranate farms will close down and jobs will be lost. Monitors and inspectors must be smart, have a good attitude, have perfect eyesight and understand the importance of their work. They must also be properly trained to perform their tasks and should be tested often. In this module, we will look firstly in detail at FCM, the pest insect you have to look out for when inspecting export fruit. You need to know what it looks like, what its life cycle is, and what you are likely to see when looking for it. After that, we will look at the right way to monitor orchards and to do packhouse inspections. We will also look at other pests you may find during inspections that you might confuse with FCM. The false codling moth has four major life stages, which are the egg, the larva, the pupa, and the adult, or moth. The moth is only active at night and lays eggs on the fruit after mating. The egg, which is small and difficult to see, hatches and produces a tiny larva that is just over one millimeter long. The larva enters the rind of the fruit and starts feeding on the pulp. Once inside the fruit, the larva grows through five larval stages while feeding on the fruit. When mature, the larva exits the fruit and goes into the soil, where it turns into a pupa. The pupa develops in the soil until a moth comes out of the pupa, starting the life cycle. Depending on the season and temperature, the life cycle from egg to egg can take between five weeks and three months, being the shortest in summer. You need to be able to identify adult FCM insects because you need to count them in traps. Note the colouring and markings of the insects in these pictures. Monitoring and inspecting for FCM infestation on the farm and in the packhouse involves three tasks. The first is orchard monitoring, involving checking and recording the level of FCM infestation in orchards by using traps and inspecting fruit. The second task is packhouse delivery inspections, where a sample is taken of fruit from each orchard as they arrive at the packhouse and the fruit sample is checked for FCM infestation. The third task is online grading and sorting, involving checking fruit on the packing line for infestation symptoms and removing such fruit. Orchard monitoring involves hanging traps with lures for FCM, recording how many FCM insects are caught in traps, Monitoring fruit for FCM infestation. Doing a pre-harvest FCM damage inspection on fruit and reporting all the findings to farm management. 
Pheromone traps are used in pomegranate orchards to monitor the level of FCM infestation. Trapping for FCM should start before the first moth flights, which is normally at the beginning of September. Specific lures are used in traps for FCM. Your farm manager will show you which traps and lures to use. Place one trap in every orchard, except if the orchard is larger than four hectares, in which case you need to divide the orchard in blocks so that there isn't a block larger than four hectares. Mark and number the blocks and orchard on a map of the farm. Pick a tree in the middle of the orchard or block and place the trap in the top quarter of the tree. Make sure that there are no leaves or branches touching the trap and that the trap entrances are clear. Number and mark the trap and clearly mark the tree and the row where the trap is installed so that you can easily find it again. Take all the trap readings every week on the same day and service traps as required for proper maintenance. If for some reason you cannot take trap readings on the day you are supposed to, do it as soon as possible after that day. When taking the trap readings, Make sure that you only count the FCM insects in the traps and no other insects that might have landed in the traps. Record the number of FCM you found in the traps in a standard format on a form that contains all the necessary information. Report this information to the farm manager and hand the recording forms in for safekeeping. Fruit must be monitored for FCM infestation every two weeks, from the beginning of December until the end of the harvest. Divide all the orchards in blocks of no larger than two hectares each. Number and mark the blocks on a map of the farm. In each block, select 25 data trees that are evenly spaced through the block. Number and mark the data trees clearly. You also need to collect fruit that has fallen under the data trees. And it is best to also mark the area under each data tree so that orchard sanitation teams know not to pick up the fruit from under them. Use the same trees for monitoring throughout the season. For fruit inspections, you need a clipboard and a recording form, a crate or bag for collecting fruit, a magnifying glass and a sharp knife. At each data tree, collect all the fruit that has fallen under the tree in the crate. Now, randomly select 10 fruit on the tree and inspect them for FCM damage while they are still hanging on the tree. If you see any damage on the fruit, pick the fruit from the tree and place it in the crate, separate from the fallen fruit. Take the fruit in the crate one by one and carefully inspect the entire surface of the fruit, looking for signs of FCM damage. At the spot where you find a mark, cut a thin slice under the mark and look for an FCM larva or signs of infestation, using your magnifying glass to take a closer look if necessary. Keep slicing the fruit in this way until you see no further signs of infestation. Finally. Cut the fruit in quarters and take a final look for signs of infestation. If there is no fallen fruit in a block or orchard and none of the fruit on any of the data trees show any signs of FCM infestation or damage, pick two fruit at random from each of the data trees in the block or orchard and cut and inspect them as described before. For each data tree, record the number of fruit infested by FCM. A fruit is recorded as infested with FCM if you find live or dead larvae in or on the fruit. The following can also be signs of FCM infestation. Larval tunneling, fresh, head capsules. 
it is important that you identify FCM infestation accurately and that you don't confuse it with other insect infestation. Other insect larvae you may see in fruit and mistake for FCM larvae are fruit fly larvae, vinegar fly and other fly larvae, beetle larvae, and carob moth larvae. Before we look at these larvae, you need to know exactly what FCM larvae look like. The young FCM larva is white with a black head capsule and is just over one millimeter long. As they get older, larvae darken, first turning off-white and finally pink. The mature larva is 15 to 20 millimeters long. Fruit fly, vinegar fly and other fly larvae are usually see-through when they are young, turning to creamy white as they mature. Fly larvae do not have the hard head capsule, which is so obvious in FCM larvae, and the mature larvae are also usually smaller than FCM larvae. Sap beetles have a dark hard head capsule like FCM, but they have a speckled body, forked tail, and are not pink. Carob moth larvae look like FCM larvae, but the smallest carob moth larvae are slightly pink, whereas small FCM larvae are white. Carob moth larvae stay this light pink color, which is a paler pink than the mature FCM larvae. The carob moth larva also has a small, dark, hard patch in front of its first spiracle, which is not seen on the FCM larva. You will, however, need a magnifying glass or microscope to see this. As part of your inspection, you can also record fly larvae and carob moth larvae, as most of these larvae are clearly different from FCM larvae, especially if you look at them through a magnifying glass. You might still make a mistake and record a carob moth larva as an FCM larva, but it is better to make this mistake rather than to record an FCM larva as a carob moth larva, because FCM infestation is far more common and the potential dangers far greater. If you are not sure about the identification of a larva, keep the larva and take a photograph of it. Speak to someone who is more knowledgeable for a second opinion. Record your monitoring findings on a standardized form that allows you to capture all the relevant information. The form can be very simple or more complicated, but it is essential that the form should at least contain the following information. The details of the person responsible for monitoring, the date of monitoring, the details of the orchard being monitored, the number of fruit collected, the number of fruit infested with FCM. Remember that this includes fruit where the larva is present, live or dead, and fruit where there are signs that the fruit was infested. Once data has been collected, report infestation levels in orchards to the farm manager, providing him with completed recording forms for safekeeping. Within 10 days of the harvest date for an orchard, a pre-harvest fruit damage assessment must be done in the orchard. Use the same data trees as for fruit infestation monitoring. Select 10 fruit at random from each data tree and look for signs of FCM damage or infestation while the fruit is still hanging on the tree. If you find any sign of FCM damage, pick the fruit and dissect it as described above, looking for FCM larva. Record your findings on a form similar to the one used for fruit infestation monitoring. If you find any live FCM larvae in any of the fruit, report this immediately to the farm manager. After harvesting, 
fruit is delivered in picking bins or trays to the packhouse for fruit to be approved for export to Europe. A sample of 600 fruit has to be taken from each orchard every day and thoroughly inspected for FCM infestation. To do a packhouse delivery inspection, you will need a clipboard with recording sheet, a crate or bag for collecting the sample, a magnifying glass and a sharp knife. A sample of 600 fruit has to be taken from all the fruit delivered on a day from an orchard. Take the fruit sample randomly and as evenly as possible from all the bins or trays delivered from the orchard that day, without selecting fruit that are better looking or more damaged. Collect the fruit for your sample in a separate crate or bag and record the details of the orchard and the date of sampling on your recording form. Carefully inspect the entire surface of every fruit in the sample by turning the fruit in your hand and looking at it from all angles, looking for marks or blemishes indicating that fruit might be infested. You may need to use your magnifying glass. It is helpful to have charts in the inspection area with FCM infestation symptoms so that you are reminded of what to look for. Set aside all fruit you think may be infested. If you are not sure that the marks or blemishes are signs of infestation, still set the fruit aside. It is better to dissect some clean fruit rather than to let through even one infested fruit. Aim to do external inspections well so that you maintain a high standard of finding infested fruit. After inspecting the fruit sample, Take another look at the fruit you set aside to make sure you have correctly identified the fruit as being infested. Take each fruit that you set aside and cut a thin slice at the spot where it might be infested. Inspect it for FCM larvae and signs of larval infestation. Keep cutting thin slices, inspecting the fruit after every slice until you have cut deep into the fruit. Finally, cut the fruit into quarters and take a last look for signs of infestation. Signs of FCM larval infestation are larval tunneling, fresh, and head capsules. However, only record a fruit as infested with FCM if you find a live larva in the fruit. The signs are merely helpful to show you where to look for larvae. As discussed before, you may find larvae of fruit fly, vinegar or other fly, beetles or carob moth in the fruit, and you may mistake these for FCM larvae. Please review the previous section where we looked at differences between the species and consult identification charts. Record findings of your inspections in a standard format that contains all essential information, similar to the form used for orchard monitoring. Record FCM infestation only if you find a live FCM larva. Report your findings to the packhouse manager, providing him with the completed forms. The purpose of a packhouse is to sort, grade, treat, and pack fruit for export. Graders are responsible for finding and removing all fruit with unacceptable marks or blemishes, including pest or disease damage. This includes fruit infested with FCM. The sorting and grading table in the packing line should be accessible and well lit so that a grader can inspect all the fruit and identify and remove blemished fruit and fruit that might be infested. There should be charts up at grading stations showing the most prominent external infestation symptoms. A fruit grader has to quickly and accurately inspect each fruit as it passes you on the grading table. If you notice any signs of infestation, pick up the fruit and inspect it closely. If you find even the smallest mark that might indicate infestation, 
remove and discard the fruit. No such fruit may be packed for export. As a monitor or inspector, you must do everything you can to find all fruit infested with FCM. By identifying and removing infested fruit, you help lower the risk of infested fruit being exported, which is very important to the success of the South African pomegranate industry.